Movement was founded on the belief that style shouldn't break the bank. With over 1 million watches sold to customers in over 160 countries around the world, Movement Watches has solidified itself as the world's fastest growing watch company. For more car photography videos and tutorials, please subscribe at the link below and follow me on Instagram at Tom England Photo. All right, folks, welcome back. Uh, in this latest video, we're gonna look at using a circular polarizer for car photography. So what it's gonna do, it's gonna allow you to reduce the reflections on the cars and see through the windows. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take both of these photos and take them directly into Photoshop. So we're gonna select the two and edit as layers in Photoshop. Uh, we're gonna align the layers themselves and we're gonna paint the blend. So what we're gonna do is use a mask to get rid of the portions of the layer that we do not want. We're gonna do some general cleanup and then we're gonna take it back into Lightroom to do some Lightroom edits and then finally back into Photoshop to do some final touches. So with the polarizer itself, um, you can get a, a, a quite a variety of different polarizers. Now this one I picked up, it's an Amazon Basics one. It cost me around 20 or $25. If you do get this one, I think with any polarizer, do not screw it on too tight. Uh, if you do that, uh, it is almost impossible to get off your lens and you don't want to do any damage to your lens. Here are the two photos we're going to be blending. So. All right, getting started. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom in, just show you a little difference here. So this is uh, rotating this, uh, the polarizer and you can see with the reflections, it didn't reduce them completely. Uh, you can do that, but uh, with this photo, it did not, but it did reduce them quite a bit. And with the windshield, um, obviously one you cannot see through at all. It's almost 100% reflected, uh, but with the other photo, um, we can see directly through it. So we're gonna take both. We're gonna select both photos and we're gonna edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. And here in Photoshop, here we have the two. Uh, and with both layers selected, we're gonna to go to edit and down to auto align layers. Selecting auto is fine and we'll hit okay. And the reason I do this is because when you rotate the, uh, the polarizer itself, it can slightly adjust the uh, the range of your lens itself and it can be slightly off. So, all right, great. So these are aligned. And for the first thing we're gonna do, now we're gonna add a layer mask to the top layer. And we're just gonna paint out this portion here so we can see through the windshield. And on the, uh, the hood of the car, we're just going to paint down that as well. So we'll paint around that. We'll paint here and increase the size of the brush. We wanna get a little on the front, near the front wheel here. And on and off, just give you an idea what it looks like. Uh, and you'll see with the polarizer, the actual, the window that's just above the, uh, the windshield of the car, you can see the effect it had on that. And I'm probably just gonna paint that away to go with the window that's below it, just for consistency here with the windows on that side of the building. So let's just paint over this portion here. So there we go, that's quickly done. So that's using a, uh, a polarizer. So taking the two photos um, and blending them together, we'll flatten this image and we'll add a cleanup layer with this. We're gonna do some general cleanup around the photo itself. And uh, we're gonna quickly go through this. This is pretty, pretty basic stuff. So using a variety of tools to clean up the background and the foreground. Uh, just get rid of anything like uh, cigarette butts or anything that's on the ground, some small rocks. Uh, there's uh, um, some garbage around there. So what we want to do is kind of reduce those. There's a couple weeds sticking out uh, of the ground near the building. I'll probably just reduce those. Some, uh, some little scuffs on the side of the building. And we'll just go around that light. Uh, I'll probably just take, take that out as well. And what we're doing is we're just zooming in and, and taking a look around here. There's a little grass coming through the ground. All right, great. So we're back in the Lightroom here. We're going to do some Lightroom edits of the photo. First thing I want to do is increase the contrast of the photo just slightly. And the shadows will bring that up. The, uh, the side of the car, it is a bit dark. So I want to increase the shadows, but... Um, and we'll use the adjustment brush. And as I've done before with my photos, I'm going to paint in with the adjustment brush to make sure the mask is on. 
and I'm going to paint some clarity as well as some sharpness on this photo. Oops, got the temperature on there. Don't want that. Reduce that temperature. All right, great. So we're just painting around here. And after I paint with the mask on, it sometimes can miss some portions that are within the car and around the wheels because of the difference in the contrast. So I'll take the mask off and just paint within the car here. Not getting close to the edges. I don't want it to bleed over the edges. Okay, with a new brush, I'm going to increase the shadows. And this just is on the side near the bottom portion of the car. That just brings it a little bit, makes it more even uh, with the top of the car. And we might as well click Remove Chromatic Aberration. I don't think there's much in this, but we might as well click it on. Uh, sharpening will increase a bit. And we'll just mask the sharpening here. Let's increase this. Just get near the corners and the edges for the sharpening. And reduce the blacks just a bit with the shadows within the wheel wells and underneath the car. Let's increase that with the blacks, which you can do with the shadow slider as well. So let's... Um, Let's reduce some of the exposure here in the foreground. We'll take it back in the Photoshop and we want to fix the perspective here of the photo. One side is straight, the other side is not 100%. So what I did is I uh, turned the grid on here to take a look so I can see where the lines are. And what we'll do is we'll select the entire image. So Control A. And we're going to transform and we're going to skew. And skew allows you to, to move one side of the photo without affecting the other. And this is just to make the photo as straight as possible. And I'm actually going to pull this down just a bit. This will be very slight. All right, some final touches here. Now I'm going to add a little fog to the background. And the purpose of this, this is going to be reduced quite a bit, but I just want a little separation uh, from the car and the background itself. This just adds a little atmospheric separation with this. And we'll paint all this in. And I'm using a color from the photo, and I sampled the color just from the headlight. And after we're done, we'll blur. Use Gaussian blur, and we'll play around with this blur, see what looks right. So on and off, there is a little bit on top of the car and I want to mask that out, but also the, um, the post there from the, uh, the basketball net. The smoke in this case would probably be behind that, so I want to make sure it does look like that. So with a mask, we'll paint away on the front of the car here. I could, I could use the pen tool and trace around the front and use it here, but it's going to be reduced, so you're probably not going to notice much anyway. It's a little quicker. I'll make a selection around this post, feather the selection just a bit, just two pixels is fine, and I'll just paint over this. Okay, good. So that's pretty good. I'm probably going to reduce the opacity here on this fog. It's a little too much. Start with zero. And like I said, I just wanted a little separation from the car and the background. And a couple final steps here. I'm going to do a slight curves adjustment. Adds a little contrast to the photo, and it does add that final bit of contrast to the photo. And finally, just a bit of levels. So Control L to bring levels up. We'll just increase the blacks here. One or two pixels will probably be fine. So thanks very much for uh, for watching the video, and I'll see you again in the next video. Every moment, breathe in this moment.